Hey there, it's Louie, and in this Amy Gurumi crochet pattern, we're gonna be crocheting a snowy plover. These charming birds are only found in the Americas, although they are closely related to other plovers that can be found worldwide. In fact, I actually see snowy plovers all the time as their breeding grounds can be found out on the San Francisco coast, which is where I live. Uh, plovers are natural engineers and will use anything that they can to make their nests from trash to driftwood, shells and rocks, nothing is off limits. These sweet and endangered birds are very chatty and well known for their enduring calls and trills. They also like to fly in little collections that look really, really cool to see um, uh, on the beach. Uh, all right, well this pattern is designed by myself, Louie, aka at Louie's Loops. This is part of a huge collaboration project that me and four other Amy Groomy artists are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund, a nonprofit that's mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on Earth. Each designer made a different Amy Groomy pattern for an endangered creature, which you can see on screen now. These patterns are all donate to download. By donating using the link on screen now or in the description below, you can get all of the patterns in this collection, each of which include a full video tutorial just like this one, and an interactive PDF with check marks to keep track of your progress, and time codes to go along with the video tutorial so you never miss a stitch. 100% of the proceeds for the digital downloads will be donated to the World Wildlife Fund indefinitely. So even if you're seeing this pattern years later, you can still support the cause. You can learn more about how to support and find all the patterns and designers in this year's collection and previous years at clubcrochet.com slash earthday. Also, I'll be releasing a new video tutorial for one of these patterns every Friday over the next five weeks, as well as doing a live stream fundraiser the Sunday after. So make sure to like this video down below, subscribe so you don't miss out. Also, donate you, you can donate to access the videos early and download the PDF versions, of course. Finally, please, please share your finished snowy plover with me by following and tagging me on social media. I'm at Louise Loops, basically everywhere. And you can use the hashtag crochet for Earth Day. Also, make sure to check out all the other designers' social accounts too. They're all incredible amigurumi artists, as you can tell. Um, you definitely should be following them if you're not already. Oh, and heads up, there is a left-handed video version of this available that you can find in the description. And we're working on a Spanish language PDF for all of these patterns right now, which should be available very, very soon. You can also quickly jump around in this video tutorial by using the time codes in the description below or at the bar at the bottom of this video. Also, I forgot to mention, <laughs> <laughs> this snowy plover is actually a burb. That's right, it's a secret agent that disguises itself as different kinds of birds. I just couldn't help myself. I really like making these little burb patterns that are secret agents. Um, I will be teaching in this video how to make it with the head attached as well as detached. Uh, so if you want to, if you don't really want to make it a burb. However, the head does stay on really well, so you don't really need to make it with the head attached if you don't want to. Um, alrighty, well, without further ado, let's talk about all the materials that you need to crochet this snowy plover. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. That's my favorite kind of yarn to use for Amy Gurumi. For this pattern, you're going to need the colors Sonoma Beige. That's going to be this uh, cool beige color with these little speckles of different colors in it. Um, that's what I like to use. I really like this like texture that's on it. It really kind of matches what um, snowy plovers kind of look like in the wild, which is kind of nice. You also need some white for the main body colors, and then a little bit of black yarn. That's just gonna be for the accent colors, for the beak, and for the little feet here. Because I'm using worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton, I'm gonna be using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. That's just the best size hook to use with the yarn that I'm gonna be using. If you use slightly bigger yarn, use a slightly bigger crochet hook as well. You'll need some eyes. I'm going to be using safety bead eyes for this. I'm using size six millimeter safety bead eyes. If you'd like to get a bottle of eyes like this, we have them for sale in our shop. You're going to need four eyes total. Well, it depends. If you're going to make a the bird with the head attached, then you only need two eyes. But if you want to make it with the under head, the burb body with the head that goes on top, then you're going to need four pairs of eyes. Let's go ahead and pop his head back on. Okay, so that's the yarn and eyes. You'll also need, um, let's see, well, we got our yarn done. Oh, you need a little bit of stuffing, of course. 
You can use some magnets like this. I like using these super strong magnets to stuff on the underside of them uh, so that they can perch on top of metal items. Um, I like to do that on normally on burbs. Um, however, I will show you how to do that in this video. But because of how the legs are, um, you'd have to have the legs sitting flat for it to actually perch on anything. So I probably won't be adding the little magnets in this video. Um, but I will show you how to do that if you would like to know what I mean. Um, I like using these little tiny ones. They're neodymium magnets. They're very super strong. They're, like, they're really hard to uh, get apart, actually. Um, I'm using size 12 millimeter by 2 millimeter in, uh, in thickness. You'll need some pipe cleaners. These are going to be used for um, making the beak and the feet. Um, you, I think you can do the whole thing with just one pipe cleaner, but it's probably safest to have two pipe cleaners. It's also really nice to have pipe cleaners that are black because that's the color that you want to make the beak and the feet in. Uh, so try to get black pipe cleaners if you can. Put those to the side. Um, you'll also need a darning needle. Now, I'm going to be using a crimped end darning needle like this to sew in the ends. However, I'm also going to be using a plastic darning needle like this. And the reason I'm going to be using a plastic darning needle is because we're going to use it as a little kickstand for him so that he can stand up on his own. Because otherwise, if you take the it out, he has a hard time standing. He's, he's kind of sitting now. And you can see here, we're going to cut the pipe, uh, cut the, um, uh, the plastic darning needle in half. You can also use a little um, a toothpick instead if you'd rather use a toothpick. Go ahead and put that back in. There we go. And then, of course, you're going to need a pair of scissors. And I think that's just about it. If you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that you see here, it comes with everything. The yarn, the magnets, the pipe cleaners, um, the eyes and even the darning needle and a crochet hook. Um, we have them available for sale in the shop. Part of your proceeds for kits also goes to the World Wildlife Fund, so if you'd like to help support the World Wildlife Fund, uh, that is another great way to do so, is just purchase a kit from us. Um, we have a lot of different kinds of kits. We have one for every one of these kits, or for every one of these patterns that you saw before, and for, every, uh, for a bunch of different kinds of burbs. So if you like this bird, you might like some of our other kits also. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. We're gonna start by making our wings here. So we're gonna start with our Sonoma beige yarn. Okay, so we're gonna start with our Sonoma beige yarn here. And we're gonna start with our um, with a magic loop. We're gonna start by making our wings. And uh, for the magic loop, if you don't know how to do it, I'm gonna show you really quick. However, if you want a more detailed uh, tutorial about how to do the magic loop, I have one on my channel. You can check out a link right here or in the description down below to get to it really quick. It shows how to do two different kinds of magic loops and the benefits to each one individually. But for a quick tutorial, I'm going to take my yarn and have it paint pointing towards the ground, so the tail end pointing towards the ground, and then grab it with your middle finger and thumb, and then go over your index finger and then back around the middle finger like that, and then back over and around the index finger again and back around the middle finger again and you should have an x on the front and two parallel lines on the back take the end attached to the ball and the tail end and take them both and place them in between your ring and pinky finger and then close it in and that's going to help us keep it held together now take your crochet hook and you want to go under the first bar you want it to face backwards so the two parallel lines are facing you go under the first bar hook onto the second one, and pull that second one under the first one, and then twist it like this to make a loop. See how I made a little loop there? Now going over that first bar, yarn over with the second one. It's best to help guide it over with your index finger. And then once it's on the hook, pull it through the loop that you made. It's easiest to really scoop it like that to create a chain. And there you go. That's gonna create a magic loop, and you can pull it off your fingers now. It should stay intact. And now what you've just made is a magic loop. When you pull this tail end, it should tighten up the hole a little bit. And what we're going to do is work our first row of stitches into the center of this magic loop. Okay, so for row one of the wings, we want a single crochet three times into the center of this magic loop. For a single crochet, we're gonna go into the stitch 
for, for this case, it's going to be into the magic loop itself. So go into the center of the magic loop and yarn over. And then pull that through the center of the magic loop. Now going over the magic loop, yarn over again and pull through the two loops that are also on the hook. So see, one, two. Easiest to scoop it like that. That's going to be a single crochet. And the majority of this pattern is going to be made with single crochets. So there's one single crochet. We want three single crochets into the center, into the same thing for row one. So there's one single crochet. Let's do a second one into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Then going over the stitch, yarn over again and pull through two. One, two. There's two. Let's do a third one into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Oopsies. Let's try that again. I, I hooked onto halfway through my yarn into the stitch, yarn over and pull it through. Going over, yarn over again and pull through two, one and two. Okay, and that's going to be the end of row one for the wings. Now we can pull this tail end nice and tight and it'll close that end up like that. Okay, for row two of the wings, we want to turn our piece and chain two. So we're going to yarn over, pull through the loop for a chain. There's one and two, and then we can turn it more. For row two, we're going to do a half double crochet increase into each stitch all the way around. Now, that is two new things for you. First off, we're going to learn how to do a half double crochet into all these stitches. And then second off, we're going to have to learn how to do an increase. And half double crochet increase just means that we're going to do two half double crochets into each one of these stitches that we made in our first row. So we want to skip these chains. Again, we'll turn it around. Let me show you with the needle where we're going to go in. You want to go under both loops of the first or of the last stitch that you made. That's going to be this one here with the little green on top. So we're skipping these chains. One, two. We're going to go under that, under it to make sure we're under both loops of that stitch when we do our stitch. But for a half double crochet, before we go into that stitch, we want to yarn over onto the hook. Now go into the stitch like that. And then we're going to yarn over again and pull that under the stitch. Now you should have three loops on the hook. To finish up your half double crochet, this is going to be your first half double crochet. Yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook. Again, it's easiest to scoop it like that. All right, that's going to be a half double crochet stitch. For this row, we want to do two half double crochets in each one of the three stitches that we made in row one. So there's our first half double crochet into the first stitch. Let's do a second half double crochet into that same stitch. You can see where that stitch is. You can see how it's kind of my finger. You can see it through it. All right, let's do it again. Yarn over. Go into the same exact stitch right here. Yarn over again with the end attached to the ball. Pull it under. Then going over, yarn over again and pull through all three loops for our second half double crochet for our first half double crochet increase. So there's one half double crochet increase. We want to do three of those, one for each of these stitches. So here's the next one. Let's yarn over. Go into the next stitch right here. Now the second one is a little bit harder to get into. You want to really make sure you're under both of those loops at the top. See how we're under both of them? Then yarn over again, pull it under the stitch, yarn over, and going over the stitch, pull through all three loops. There's our the start of our second half double crochet increase. Let's do one more into that same stitch for our second half double crochet increase. We yarn over into the same stitch, Yarn over and pull it through. Then going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through all three loops. There's our second half double crochet increase. Now we want one more into this last stitch. The last one can be kind of hard to get into, but you really want to make sure that you get under this and that. So both of the loops of the last one. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch right here. It's easiest to get under both of those by helping and prying those stitches over with your index finger like that. Yarn over again and pull it through that stitch. Now yarn over and pull through all three loops like so. There's our first half double crochet. We want one more into the exact same stitch. Yarn over into the same stitch right here and then yarn over again and pull it under. And now yarn over 
and pull through all three loops. That's going to be the end of row two for your uh, for your wings. There should be six single or six half double crochets into this now. If you want to count your half double crochets, look along the edge here, and you'll see these V's. Starting at where this loop is coming out, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be your last one right there. Okay. So for our wings, both rows one and two will be made the exact same, whether you're making the right wing or the left wing. They're both going to be made the exact same. But row three is going to be made different depending on which wing you're making. So you're either going to make wing R or wing L. That's wing right or wing left. It's kind of hard to say wing so many times. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with wing R, and then after I finish our first right wing, we're going to remake what we just made and do wing L for our left wing. So for our right wing, we're going to turn our piece, and we're going to chain three. Turn over and pull through. One, two, three. And then we're going to, into our first stitch right here, we're going to slip stitch one. For a slip stitch, we want to go under both loops, like that, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then pull it through the loop on the hook, like that. Okay, so chain three, slip stitch one into the next stitch. And you wanna do that same thing three times total. So that's gonna be our first time, our first repeat. Let's do it two more times. Chain three, one, two, and three and then slip stitch into the next one right here. Make sure you're under both loops. Pull through and pull through. There's our second wing. One more, chain three. One, two, three, and then a slip stitch into the last one right here. All right, so that's gonna be your three repeats done. You see how that's gonna make these little frills at the end of the, the wing there. To finish up row three, you want to just do row three R, I should say. You want to do a slip stitch into the next three stitches, into the last three stitches, actually. So we're going to go into the next stitch right here and do a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then through the loop on the hook. That's going to be one. Let's do one more into the next one right here. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, through the loop. There's two. One more. To the next one here, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, through the loop on the hook. Okay? And to finish up the right wing, you want to yarn over and chain one. Just like that. We're going to use that to tie into the body. Now we can cut the yarn, leaving somewhat of a long end. You just need it long enough to, so you can sew it onto the body later. And then just pull it all the way through. Okay, so you can make both your rings this exact same way if you'd like. Let me show you on the finished, on our finished one here. So this is going to be this wing here. You can make both of these wings the exact same way. However, the right and the left wing will look slightly different. So if this is sewn on over here, you can kind of see how it looks slightly different. You can make them the exact same. It's really not a problem. In fact, if you make them the exact same, it will be a little bit easier to sew on. So if you want to make both these wings just like that, you know, it's kind of, you can't really tell the difference between the sides. You can kind of, but yeah. But I'm going to show you now how to do a left wing too, just in case you want to do a left wing instead of two right wings. So we're going to get our yarn. And I'm going to make our second wing, we're going to do rows one and two the exact same way that I did for uh, this wing. So we're going to do two more the exact same row one and two. And then I'll be back and to do row three L after that. Okay, so I've just finished up row two again. And now we're going to do our left wing. Um, for the left wing, we're going to turn and chain one. You just need to chain one this time. And now we go, we're going to do basically what we did on our last wing, but the opposite way. So we're going to do three slip stitches, and then we're going to do that chain three slip stitch, chain three slip stitch, chain three slip stitch. So start with three slip stitches. We're going to skip our chain, go into the next stitch right here, 
and do a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. There's one. Let's do the next stitch right here. Make sure you're under both loops. There's two. And then the third one right here, there's three. Okay, so three slip stitches. Now we wanna do our little frills. For our frills, we're gonna chain three, yarn over, pull through one, two, three, and then do a slip stitch into the next right here. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook. There's our first one. Let's do that. We're going to repeat that three times total. Let's do our second repeat. Chain three. One, two, three, and then slip stitch into the next one right here. Okay. And then one more. Chain three. One, two, three, and then slip stitch into the next one right like that. Okay. That's going to be the end of row 3L. Now we can, um, you can either chain one and then hide the end, um, but I'm not going to chain one. Instead, I'm just going to cut, leaving a somewhat long end. And this is the only problem with doing this double wing thing, is uh, once you cut the end, you can pull it through, all the way through. And the only problem with this is, for our right wing, both of these ends are exactly how we want them to sew it on into the piece. We have one end on this side and one end coming through the middle. For our left wing, however, we have our one coming out the middle, but the other one's coming out through all the way through the other side. So what we need to do is we need to thread this all the way over to the other side, all the way to this, this, um, this side of the stitch. This is why you, like, you honestly, you can make it either way. Um, but here's what it looks like. Well, actually, let's go ahead and I'm going to thread this end on the needle. And we're going to hide this into our piece all the way to the other side of the stitch. So I'm just going to go ahead with our needle. I'm going to go through a stitch and pull it through. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm basically zigzagging my way back over to the other side of the wing to hide this end in and get it to the other side. Now again, you could just do one of these wings, just the right wing instead, if you'd like to, um, but I'll show you what the difference looks like. To finish it up, we're gonna pull through that very end there, and pull it all the way through. Okay, so now you have two ends here, or two wings, the left one and the right one. Now you can see why, the or the difference. So this is what, the right wing looks like. Here's the left wing. If I hold them up for you, you can see how they kind of mimic each other. But if I were to turn them around, here's the left wing and here's the right wing. You can kind of see how it's different. However, it would totally work if you just did two of the same right wings as well. Okay, so now we have our two wings. Next up, we want to make our tail. Okay, so for the tail, we're going to start the exact same way. We're going to start with the magic loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that started. And the tail is pretty cute uh, because it looks like a little tiny heart. I really like it a lot. So working into the magic loop, we're going to just do a series of stitches. We're going to learn a few sti new stitches here. Um, and we're just going to do them all into the center of this magic loop. And I'm just going to rattle them off one by one, but I'll go pretty slow. Okay, so for... Into this magic loop, we're going to start with a single crochet. So go into the magic loop, yarn over and pull it under, then going over, pull through two. So that's our first stitch, single crochet. Second stitch is a half double crochet. We did that in the wing as well. You want to yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under. Now you should have three loops on the hook. Going over the stitch, yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook. One, two, three. There's your half double crochet. Next, you want to do a double crochet, which is going to be a little bit bigger than the half double. We're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, and pull it under. So, so far, exactly the same as the half double crochet. However, this is where it differs. We want to yarn over and pull through just two of these loops. One, two. And then yarn over again and pull through two more of the loops. One, two. That's called a double crochet. So single, half double, double. 
Next, we want to do a triple crochet or a treble crochet. Depends on what you call it. People call it both. For a triple or treble crochet, we want to yarn over two times. One, two, and then go into the stitch. Yarn over again and pull it under. And then going over the stitch, we want to yarn over and pull through two loops, only two of them, one and two, and then yarn over again and pull through another two, one, two, and then finish up by yarning over and pulling through the last two loops, one, two. All right, so that's gonna be a treble crochet or triple. Next, we want to chain two, yarn over, pull through, there's one chain and two. And then into the center, we want to do a slip stitch into the very center. So we're going to go into the center, yarn over, pull it under, and then pull it through the loop on the hook like that for a slip stitch. Okay, I'm going to just kind of pull that towards the end of there too. Next, we want to chain three. So we yarn over, and one chain, two, three. Okay. After doing the chain, uh, the three chains, now we want to do what we did in our start here, a single half, double, triple, but the other way around. So we want to do a triple crochet, double, half, double, single, and then that'll be the end. So first we want to do our triple crochet. So we yarn over twice, one, two, into the magic loop, yarn over again, and pull it under. Then going over it, yarn over again, and pull through two. One, two. So there's one. Now we want to yarn over again, pull through another two. One, two. There's two. One more, yarn over and pull through two. One, two. There's our triple crochet. Next, we want to do a double crochet. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. One, two. And then yarn over again and pull through the last two. One, two. Okay, so triple, double. Next, we want to do a half double into the set stitch. So we yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under. And then going over the stitch, we want to yarn over and pull through all three lo the loops at the same time. So it's easiest to do the scoop for a half double. Okay, and then our last stitch here is a single crochet. We want to go into the stitch, yarn over and pull it under. And then going over, yarn over and pull through two. Okay. To finish up the tail, we can just pull the magic loop nice and tight. We don't need to chain it at all. You don't need to chain like you did for the um, wings. All you have to do now is cut the yarn like that, and then just pull it all the way through like that. And now we're gonna, now we have our little tail and you can see how it makes just this cute little heart of a tail oh so sweet all right so we got our tail we got our wings uh we've got our oh well that's it actually we have our wings and our tail okay so next up we want to make the burb beak we want to use our black yarn for that now this part is a uh, does is different so as i explained in the beginning of this pattern this pattern is designed as a burb, aka a secret agent that disguises itself as other kinds of birds. You can see how the head comes off. Um, the main head is designed to be removed and hiding another bird's head underneath. Uh, this is completely optional and this pattern uh, includes instructions for making the bird with the head attached, but if you want to make it into a burb version like this, you'll need to make this optional burb beak. That's going to be this one right here to sew onto the face under the bird. So, for a burb beak, it's it's really easy, which is the good thing. It's, it's a really easy um, little pattern. All you need to do is take your black yarn and start by making a slip knot. For a slip knot, we're gonna take the long end and fold it over the short end like that, and then pinch it at where it connects, and then fold that over itself Oh, I'm sorry, other way around. We want the short end over the long end like that. Pinch it in the center and fold it over itself so that the short end's over here and the long end's over there. And then going into the loop, pinch the inside and pull it through to make a slip knot. Now when we put it on our crochet hook, when we pull this tail end, nothing's gonna happen. But when we pull this end to test the ball, it'll tighten it up. That's called a slip knot. 
Okay. Now, once you have it on the crochet hook, we want to chain three. So we're gonna yarn over, pull it through the loop. One, there's two, and three. Okay. Now, all we need to do is do a half double crochet into the first chain that we made, or the third chain from the hook. The important thing here is that you wanna work into the back loop of the chain. So if you look at the top of the chains, there's a top loop, that's this one right there, and then there's a bottom loop down here. But if you turn it around a little bit, you see that little spine there? That is the back loop. So in this last back loop right here is where we wanna do our half double crochet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and then take your crochet hook, line it up with that last little spine, and then guide it over the crochet hook with your nail. Then we can yarn over, pull it through that chain, yarn over again, and pull through all three loops on the hook to finish up our half double crochet. Finally, we can yarn over and chain one. Cut the yarn, you don't need a very long end at all. That's more than enough. And then just pull it all the way through, just like that. And that is gonna be how to make your burb beak. This is gonna be used to sew onto the face that's going under the head. All right, speaking of heads, let's make the head next. And that's gonna be a little bit more complicated than what we've already been making. Okay, for the head, we're gonna start with the magic loop, just like how we started the wings and the tail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make our magic loop really quick. And we're gonna start with round one of the head. For round one, we're gonna single crochet six times into the center of the magic loop. So we've already done three single crochets in the center, but this time we're gonna do six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that started. There's one, two, three, four, there's five and six. Before I pull it tight, let's grab a little bit of yarn in a different color which we can use to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. So I'm just gonna cut a little tiny bit of yarn, and wipe up my cat's fur, because my cat's fur is everywhere for some reason. And we're going to um, put the center of this right into the magic loop, right through that magic loop. And now we can pull our tail end and tighten up the magic loop around that extra yarn. Okay. All right, we're just gonna use this to keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. So we're gonna go ahead and fold it over our piece like that. And there we go. Now we're just gonna ignore it and we're gonna crochet around it as if it's not there and it'll keep track of where our ends of our rounds are. All right, for round two of the head, we wanna just do an increase into each stitch around. An increase just means two single crochets into the exact same stitch. So first we wanna find the first stitch that we made. That's gonna be right here. If you want, you can count backwards. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is gonna be our first one. Make sure that you get under both of the loops of that first stitch right here. So the head's gonna be worked in a spiral without turning. So we're just gonna keep going around. Now, before we do our first increase, we wanna take our tail end and fold it over our crochet hook and just ignore it. We're gonna crochet around it and this is gonna keep this locked into place. Okay, so for our first increase, we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it through the stitch. And then going over the stitch, yarn over again and pull through the two loops on the hook, one and two. All right, so there's our first single crochet. Our second single crochet is gonna be an increase. So it's gonna be into the exact same stitch that we just worked into. We wanna do an increase into every stitch around here. So let's do our second single crochet into that same stitch right here. Yarn over again and pull through and over it, yarn over and pull through two. That's two single crochets into the same stitch and our first increase done. We want six increases total which is gonna end up going from six stitches to 12 stitches. So by the end of this round, we're gonna end up going up to 12 stitches around. So let's do our second increase right here. Go into the next stitch. You can see how I'm under both those loops. I'm still working around our tail end just for this next stitch. 
and then we can be done working around this tail. We'll pull a loop through, going over it, pull through two. There's our first single crochet of our second increase. Let's do another one into the same stitch, pull through, then going over it, pull through two. All right, so there's our second increase. We could pull this tail end off to the side now. We don't need to work around it any longer, but let's keep working around. Into this next stitch here, we want two more single crochets. There's one, and into the same stitch, two. That's our third increase. We want three more to get to the end of the round. Here's our next one. There's one, and two. Next stitch. One, and two. Last increase into this last stitch here. One, and into the same stitch, two. All right, that's gonna be six increases total, one for each stitch around. That's gonna be 12 stitches total though. So we have 12 stitches around. Again, if you wanna count, count the Vs around the edge. You should be able to find to the end here. All right, next we can yarn or place our stitch marker over again. And we can actually, we can cut this end as well. So go ahead and cut it relatively close, like that close is fine. And I'm also gonna pull my stitch marker up a little bit so that this tail end is just barely through it, just like that. Okay, fold it over and keep going. All right, now we're on to round three of the head. For round three, we're gonna do three single crochets, one for the next three stitches, and then we're gonna do an increase after that. And then we'll repeat that process three times total. So let's do our first repeat. We're gonna go into the next stitch right here. That's gonna be after the stitch marker. See it right there. So that's gonna be one single crochet into the next, and then one single crochet into the stitch after, and then one more after that. So that's three single crochets in a row. One, two, three, and then an increase after that. So that means two into the next stitch right here. It's gonna be one, and then into the same stitch, two. There we go, one, two, three, and then an increase. Let's repeat that three times total. That's our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat. Three single crochets, one, two, three, and then an increase after that right here one and two into the same stitch. One more of those, three single crochets and then an increase to get to the end. One, two, three, and then our final increase right here. One and two into the same stitch. There we go. That's gonna be the end of round three. You should now have 15 stitches around. You can see how it's kind of like tilting down. That's exactly what we want. Pull our stitch marker up. And now we're into round four. Okay, so if you're reading along in the written version of this pattern, uh, because you donated, in our rounds four and five, our next two rounds, any stitches that are underlined are gonna be white, and any stitches that are not underlined are gonna be this Sonoma beige. So uh, I'm gonna obviously go through it one stitch at a time, but just heads up if you are reading along, that is how to read these rounds because it might be kind of confusing just seeing stitches that are underlined. All right, so for round four, it's actually just gonna be single crochets around. It's a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. However, the first five are gonna be Sonoma beige, then the next six are gonna be white, and then the last four stitches are gonna be back to the Sonoma color. So we're gonna get our white yarn prepared. We're just gonna get it ready, basically, and hold it, hold on to it. We'll just keep it right here. And we're gonna start by doing five single crochets in our regular beige yarn. Again, this round is just single crochets, really. So we're gonna do five in beige. One, two, and I'm gonna stop halfway through our fifth. There's three, four, and then five, before we pull through with our Sonoma, we wanna to change to white and actually pull through with white instead. So what we're gonna do is take your white yarn 
and I'm gonna place it in between the end attached to the ball, that's gonna be this end here, and then the two loops that are already on the hook like that. So just place it right in between the two of them, and then I'm gonna hold it down with the index finger of my dominant hand, and then with my non-dominant index finger, I'm gonna go right in between the two colors, and then fold it so the new color is under the old color like that. It makes a little twist there. We're gonna yarn over with the new color, white, and then pull it through the two loops on the hook. One and two to change colors. All right, and that's gonna be changing to white yarn. Now, we're just gonna let this Sonoma color float. That means we're just gonna pull it off to the side like that, and we're just gonna ignore it as we do the next stitches until we need it again to change colors back to it after we get to the end of uh, these white stitches. So there's gonna be six single crochets in white. So just do a single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, and this will be six. Now before I finish and pull that through, we wanna actually change colors back to the beige. So now we can grab our beige yarn, place it under or between the two ends again. See how we just have it attached there. We're placing it between the two. Hold it down with the index finger of our dominant hand. Non-dominant index finger goes between the two colors and then flips the new color under the old one. Yarn over with the new color. That's gonna be our Sonoma and just pull it all the way through like that. All right, now we've switched from white back to our Sonoma. Next, we can do a single crochet into the next stitch right here. It's just gonna be single crochets all the way to the end. That's only four more single crochets. However, for our first single crochet, I'm gonna work around our white yarn just for one stitch. And that's just gonna help it keep it locked into place because now we're gonna cut our white yarn and we're gonna come back to it in the next round when we need to change back to our white color. However, it's too long for us to float. I don't really like letting the yarn float when it's that far ar around. Okay, so let's finish up this round. Four single crochets in white. One, two, three, and here's four. All right, that's gonna be the end of round four. For round five, we want to do five single crochets in Sonoma and then seven in white and then three more in Sonoma. So let's start by doing our five in Sonoma. One, two, three, four, and here's our fifth. Now we're gonna take our white yarn, place it in between the two on the hook and the one attached to the end, flip it under and pull through with white. And we'll pull that white a little bit more so we don't have too much of a tail end. Just like that. Okay. And we can let our Sonoma float. And now we wanna do seven single crochets in white. One, two, three, four, five, six, and here's seven. Grab our Sonoma yarn, pull it over. Make sure it goes with the arc of the inside of the head so we got some slack there. Hold down with our index finger and flip it under and switch to our Sonoma. Pull our white a little tighter. And then this time, I'm still gonna single crochet around the white, but we don't have to cut it this time. We're gonna go into this next stitch and single crochet over it. So we want a single crochet until our last three stitches in Sonoma. I'm just gonna let our white yarn float off to the side because we're gonna change after these next two stitches. So one stitch there, and then our last stitch here. Now we can grab our white yarn, place it in between. Now, there's a few different ways we can do this here. For the rest of the head, we only wanna work in our white yarn. You can just yarn over with white, pull through, and then change to white, and that's just the end. Um, you will just use white after that, just like how we've been regularly changing colors. But that might leave just a little bit of a jog at the end here. It's not really a big deal at all. But if you wanna do this here, this is kind of it, it's supposed to like clean it up a little bit, make it look a little less obvious. However, it kind of does look a little obvious now that I look at it again. But if you wanna learn how to do that, I have a video called The Perfect Stripe Method that teaches you how to do this and a few different techniques for making a more clean stripe along the back. However, 
I kind of think that that one is actually pretty noticeable. So I'm just going to go ahead and change over right back to our white yarn and finish up that round and not worry about doing that perfect stripe method. We'll pull up our stitch marker. And that's going to be the end of round five. All right, for rounds six and seven, that's two rounds in a row, we just need to do single crochets all the way around in white. For our very first single crochet, I'm going to work around our Sonoma yarn and then cut it. And then we're going to be done with this Sonoma yarn until we get to the body. And I don't know where this beige yarn came from. <laughs> all right. So now we're just doing single crochets all the way around in white yarn. There should be 15 stitches total. So this is a good chance for you to count your stitches if you're a little worried that your stitch count is off. But yeah, if you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing down below. It helps this channel out. Um, yeah, just like it, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with new videos. Um, we do a lot of patterns like this and we do live crochet alongs and uh, we have a podcast. It's really awesome. You definitely should subscribe if you're not already and, and like the video just because that's a nice thing to do. Also, donate to the World Wildlife Fund because you should. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pull that over. We're on to our round uh, seven now, just doing single crochets all the way around, continually single crocheting around. There we go. If you wanna check out more burbs, just like this one, I have a whole bunch of different ones. We have barn owls and pigeons and ducks and chickens. And let's see, we got a flamingo and a crow. I do a lot of little birds like this. I really like making these little birds, especially when I make them look um, like birds in disguise in this little burb version of them. That's my favorite way to make birds. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be the last single crochet in round seven. All right, you can see how our little heads coming together. All right, before we add our face and stuff, we wanna do round eight. For round eight, we're gonna work in, in the front loops of all the stitches around only. So normally we've been working under both loops like that. This time we only wanna work under this front loop here. And we're gonna do basically a cute little frill around the outside. So what you wanna do, take your crochet hook, chain one, and then into the front loop only, slip stitch one. So we're gonna go into that front loop only. The easiest way to get through that front loop is point up from the bottom up like that. And then yarn over, pull through that front loop and through the loop on the hook. All right, we're gonna repeat that all the way around. That's gonna be a 15 repeats total of that. So that again is a chain one and then slip stitch into the front loop. Front loop, slip stitch, just like that. Just keep doing that all the way around. Pretty easy, chain one front loop slip stitch. Chain one, front loop, easy squeezy. And this makes a really cute little frill around the outside of our neck. And uh, yeah, it's just a really easy way to make a little bit extra of uh, detail for your snowy clover. Okay. Oopsies, I forgot to do chain one in between that. Don't forget your chain one or else it won't be a frill. It'll just be a, a line. Chain one and slip stitch. Just a few more. Chain one, slip stitch. Three more. And here's our last one. Okay. So you can see how we made that cute little frill there. Okay, now here is, um, before we add our face, here is the part where you will either continue on in our piece to make the body uh, or make the head separate. Now I'm gonna be making the head separate in this pattern. However, I'm going to explain right now how to make the head um, attached. So what you wanna do is instead of what we're about to do, you want to skip over to uh, round um, round four of the body and into stitch number nine. So I will be 
letting you know i'll put a i'll put a little time code somewhere here for exactly where that uh where that is in this video tutorial but essentially what we're gonna do is when we get to round um round four of the body stitch number nine let me just skip to it really quick in the in the video there or in the pattern it's going to be all in our white yarns and it's going to be just single crochets um so what you would end up doing now is you'd work into the back loops only of the next stitches so right here into this back loop that you didn't work into from your, your last round if you want to make sure you can find the first one you can count backwards from this one all the way around to find your first one but it's going to be this one right here and what you're going to do is you're going to start round um round four of the body stitch number nine and it'll be a single crochet and it'll just be a single crochet there there and there and then you'll go continue on to round five and you'll continue working into these back loops and then when you get back around you can work into both loops again just like normal and that's going to be how to make the head actually attached to the body if you want to instead of making it separate however i'm going to make it separate to make it separate all you need to do is cut the yarn you don't need a very long end at all because we're just going to hide it in pull it all the way through and then we'll thread this end on a needle like that. And we're going to do something called a hidden end. I'm going to go into the back of this next part of our stitch right here, just into the back of it, and then down through where this end is coming out. So look at where it's coming out of right there. And then we're going to go down and hide it into a few stitches on the body right just like that and then we're going to pull it tight and we're basically going to mimic the top of these edges so we're just going to pull it tight but not too tight just like that and then we can just cut it you can hide it even further along in it if you are worried of it coming undone i'm not really worried about that so i'm just going to cut it somewhat close about like that and just throw that off to the side and now i have my head separated from the body Okay, let's pull these stitch markers out. We'll use this again when we get to the body. And now we want to add, um, add our face. So the first thing we wanna do is add the eyes. So we're gonna grab our six millimeter eyes here. You just need two of them to start. Um, I'm gonna hold on to grab a couple more right now because we're, I'm gonna need them for our body a little later anyhow. So we'll save ourselves a little bit of time. Just place it off to the side. Okay. Now with these eyes, the eyes are going to go, um, uh, where's the eye? The eyes are going to go into round five, into round, into stitches seven and 12. Now that can kind of be just confusing. The easier way to say it is just when you look at where these white stitches are, you want to go two up and then one over right here. That'll be one eye. And then the other one will be all the way over here. I believe two stitches over from the other side. Let me count. Um, yeah, right? No, 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 one stitch. So all the way over like this. Is that gonna be right? Well, you know what? Let's, let's, oh, actually, no, it's not. It's, it's over one more right here. I'm sure of it. Yeah, right? Let's count our stitches. Let's, let's, why don't we do what's written in the pattern, Lewis? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna count my rounds up. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then this round is gonna be five, and we want stitch seven and 12. So that's gonna be stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one's in the right one. And then eight, nine, 10, 11. Aha, it is over here. 12. See, it's good that we count our stitches. There we go. So that's how the eyes are gonna be added in. And now we can just lock them on the inside. So I just place this end on the inside and just pop them in. There's one. And here is two. All right, so that's the eyes added on. Next, we want to embroider on a little bit of black yarn onto the face. So we're gonna grab just a little bit of this black yarn. You don't need too much, but that's probably more than enough. 
cut it and thread it onto our needle. And the first thing we want to do is embroider it on in between uh, the forehead. So the first place we want to put it is right in between the forehead. We want to embroider a bit. And then we're also going to embroider two little cheek um, pieces right here. So let's start by doing our forehead ones. And those ones are going to be right here in between the forehead. That's going to be stitches um, three and five. So right here to right one, two, over, just like that. And I don't want it to be too long. I want to save some of our black yarn. So I'm actually, I'm just going to pull it almost all the way until there's just a little bit of the tail left over so I don't waste any black yarn here. So I just have a little tail end coming through so we can double knot it to it. And we want to embroider it so that it goes around it twice. So we're going to come back out through the inside and do that again. And I'm just checking on the inside that I didn't accidentally hook onto something I shouldn't. Okay, just like that. We can do it a third time too if you want. You just want a little tiny, a little tiny um, detail basically. All right, once you have that, we can double knot it on the inside. There's one. And two. Okay. And let's cut it nice and close right on the inside like that. And then now we can do our, um, the black on the edges of the face as well. So the edges of the face are going to go right, start, let's have this guy sitting right here so we can see it. We're going to start right under the eye right here. Is that correct? Yes. Right here. And then pull it almost all the way through. And then we're going to go over one, two, and then up one. It's going to be right here. And then out through where we started. And we're going to double that up. There's one. And then in through where we just went in. There's two. And then we can double knot those. On the inside. And these are important for the snowy plover because they do have these little additions of black yarn on the side of their face. I wonder what it's for. Maybe it's to trick predators into thinking they have more eyes or something. Who knows? Okay. And then we're going to do another one of those on the opposite side over here. And that one's going to be in the same place just under the eye couple stitches over and up. Pull it almost all the way through so we have some black yarn left over. We're going to need the rest of this black yarn for the beak. One, and then up through the same stitch. And then down to double knot. Okay, that's going to add those little embroidered black parts double knot it. One and two. Okay, we can cut the yarn nice and close. And then we can make our beak. Now we can make the beak. All right, so making the beak is a little bit uh, of, it's just a different technique. Um, I really like using this technique a lot with pipe cleaners, and we're going to use it again later on in the feet. What you need to do is grab a pipe cleaner. This is a full pipe cleaner, and we're going to just fold it in half and cut it in half. Um, I wouldn't suggest using scissors for cutting pipe cleaners. I'm just going to do it because it's easiest for me now. But if you have pliers, it will uh, save your scissors from dolling out like mine have. Okay, so now we have half, half of a pipe cleaner. Now you can fold it in half again. Now This part's up to you. You can fold it in half again and then cut it, or you can leave a pretty long end. Um, let's see, will this be, if we fold this half in half, 
Is that going to be long enough for our beak is, is the big question. Yeah, that should be good. So we're going to fold in half again. Um, if you're worried about that being too less, then you can like fold it into a third and just cut off a little bit off of it. But in half should work. And we'll just cut it again. We're going to take one of these halves and fold that in half, like so. Okay. Now, take your needle, go straight through the center of, or the inside here, and we're going to make a little loop like that by, by twisting the pipe cleaner around our needle. You want this loop to be big enough so that you can fit a needle into it, so don't make it too tight. And now we're just going to keep twisting it up until there's just two little tiny nubs of an end right there and a long twisted pipe cleaner there. Now with, it kind of looks like a little Y. Now with this Y, we want to go around the stitch just in between these eyes. That's going to be, I believe, stitch nine in round five. So it's going to be right here, right in the center. We want to go through one half there and then the other half on the opposite side of it, right? Like that, and just poke it through. You can see the two ends coming through on the inside there. And take the two ends on the inside and twist them together to lock it into place. So we're gonna take these two ends and just twist them a few times. And that should keep the pipe cleaner in place. I also like to fold them back open so it doesn't come back out. All right, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so now we have a little nose, um, but I want this to be a little bit more, to look a little bit more like it's made out of yarn like the rest of it. So what we're gonna do is take our yarn, we're gonna come out through one side of this nose and pull it almost all the way through. And then we're gonna begin winding it around the outside of the pipe cleaner up to the end of the pipe cleaner. And we're gonna try to cover as much of the pipe cleaner as possible as we go up. When we get to the end here, take your needle and go through that center loop that you left. And we're just gonna go around that center loop just a few times. One, two, let's do like three, maybe four. I'm just trying to cover as much of the pipe cleaner as I can as I do this. And then once I have it around a few times, we can just start wrapping our way back down beak. I'm also going to pinch that end to tighten it a little. And so now we're going to wrap back down the beak, down to the base. But you want to make it so that the base of the beak is a little bit thicker than the tip of the beak. Also, I have a little bit of fuzz just barely poking out of that. I just didn't go around it as well as I should have. So I'm just going to cut those little fuzzes a little bit. All right, so I'm wrapping back down. And then as I get closer to this base, I'm gonna wrap a few extra times here so that the base of our, of our beak is a little bit thicker than the tip of the beak. And then when I get to the very bottom, we're gonna go through the opposite side of where you came out. So I came out of this side, so I'm gonna go into the other side right here, just like that. See how that beak looks? It's pretty good, I like it, it's very cute. This would be a great beak for a hummingbird as well. This is actually how I do the hummingbird beaks. And then on the inside here, we can double knot these two ends on the inside. There's one and two. And now you have a little beak. And we're gonna do the feet somewhat similarly to the beaks once we're done making the body. All right. So now we have our head completely done and we can finally start working on the body of our burb. Um, again, if you wanted to make that head attached, uh, you want to continue on into round four into these base ones, but I'm just gonna keep this head detached and we're just gonna place it to the side and uh, continue on in the body. Okay, so our body's going to be started the exact same way that we started our head, um, but this time we're going to start with our white yarn, not our Sonoma yarn, but it's, the rounds are going to be the same. So I'm just going to get started and do a magic loop in our white yarn here. 
And then round one of the body is going to be six single crochets into the center of the magic loop. Nice and easy. Six single crochets into the center. One, two, three. There's four, five, and six. Let's get our little stitch marker, place it right in between, and then pull nice and tight around it. We'll fold our stitch marker over like that and fold our tail end over the first stitch so that we can work around it as we work around. Round two of the body is gonna be the same as round two of the head, just an increase into every stitch around. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick. That's two single crochets per stitch all the way around. So there's one, two, and three, four. After doing the uh, working around this tail for two stitches, I'll pull it tighter, but then I can let it float off to the side. We will be using this tail end in a little bit, so don't cut it too close. Um, I just like to add a little tuft of, of uh, feathers on the top of my burb's head, but you don't have to do that. It's just what I like to do. So I don't like to cut that tail end. All right, here's our last increase. One and two. All right, it's gonna be the end of round two of the body. For rounds three and four, that's gonna be two rounds in a row. We just wanna work a single crochet into every stitch around. So I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up and there should be 12 stitches per round. Just one single crochet per stitch. A nice easy break for two rounds, rounds three and four, just single crochets. Nice and easy. All right, coming to the end of our first round, round three. And I'm just going kind of quick here because you don't need to see me just making single crochets over and over again. I mean, I guess that's what you're kind of watching, but still. <laughs> We're just doing two rounds of single crochets. This is a good chance for you to count your stitches too. So if you have, you, you should have 12 stitches around. So just giving you that heads up. All right. We're coming up now to the end of round four. Okay. One more. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round four. Let's pull our stitch marker up. And uh, for our next uh, few rounds, rounds five, six, seven, eight, and nine, we're gonna be doing color changes using Sonoma yarn and white yarn. Um, but this time, if you're reading along in the written instructions, if you see an underlined stitches, that means that it's the Sonoma yarn that you're changing to. So it's the opposite of what you were seeing in the in um, for the head. So Underlined stitches means that Sonoma yarn switches. Ooh, that rhymes. Okay, so we're just gonna place our Sonoma yarn there. We'll come to it in a second. And we're gonna start with round five. We're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase. This is all gonna be in white. Three single crochets and an increase and three more single crochets and then we'll switch over to our Sonoma yarn. So that's three single crochets in white. One, two, three, and then our increase stitch after that. That means two in the same stitch. One, two, and then three more single crochets. One, two, three. Oh, I shoot, I totally forgot to show where to come back if you were making that body. I'm sorry. Um, if you have any questions about how to add that body, um, <laughs> let me know in the comments. I'm really sorry I forgot to do that. I will be doing a live crochet along for this so I can show you a little bit more in, in that part. But you just wanted to start at round or at our ninth stitch on round four. I'm sorry though. Okay, back to where we were. So we did three single crochets in white and increase and then three more single crochets in white. Now uh, we want to change over to our Sonoma yarn after doing those three single crochets. So we're gonna grab our Sonoma yarn. I'm gonna undo this last of our three single crochets here. So undo the last one just halfway so we can change colors. And then I'm gonna grab my Sonoma yarn and place it in between the two and change over to Sonoma, yarn over and pull through. And then pull that one a little tighter. 
All right, now that I'm in Sonoma yarn, we want to do, I'm just gonna let this yarn float and we're gonna do an increase into the next stitch in Sonoma. One, two, and then three more single crochets and then an increase. So it's one, two, three single crochets and then an increase to finish up round five. One and two. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round five. There should be 15 stitches around now. Pull our stitch marker up. For round six, we're gonna start with our white yarn. So I'm actually gonna undo that last one like that. And then I'm going to grab my white yarn that's floating and fold it over, place it in between the colors there and then switch over to white and pull through with white to change over to white yarn. Okay, for round six, we're gonna do four single crochets in white and then an increase and then three more single crochets in white and then we're gonna change back to Sonoma. So I, I think we can probably just let the yarn float now. Well, you know what, let's cut the Sonoma yarn. I'm worried about it floating for too far and sewing on the body. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna cut it and place it to the side. We'll come back to it in a few stitches. So that's gonna be, again, four single crochets in white, one, two, three, four, and then an increase, one, two, into the same stitch, and then three more single crochets and then change back to Sonoma. So there's one, two, we'll get halfway through the third, and then grab our Sonoma yarn and change back over to it and pull through with it. Okay. And this time I, I am going to cut my, well, I'm going to work around it for a first stitch, but then I'm going to cut my white yarn. Okay. Now after doing our, uh, changing over to our Sonoma, we want to do one single crochet in Sonoma, worked around our white yarn just to keep it locked into place. And then we'll cut the white yarn. We'll come back to it at um, in after the beginning of our next round. And we did our one single crochet in Sonoma. Now we want to do our increase into the next stitch right here. That's two into the same stitch. One, two. Then four more single crochets and another increase at the end of this round. One, two, three, four and then finish up with an increase in Sonoma. One and two, okay. Pull our stitch marker up, and that's gonna be the end of round six. For round seven, we wanna do one single crochet in Sonoma and then change back to our white yarn. So let's get our white yarn ready and do one single crochet in Sonoma. Then before we continue, we'll grab our white yarn, place it in between the two, and flip it under, yarn over with white, and pull through the two loops with white. Okay, so that's gonna be the beginning of round seven. Now with white yarn, we wanna do eight more single crochets all in white. And I'm just gonna cut our Sonoma yarn, and we'll come back to it after our eight single crochets. That's just because I think that float's gonna be just a little too long for my liking. So that's eight single crochets in white after our one single crochet in Sonoma. So one, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, and here is eight. We'll grab our Sonoma yarn. I probably could have let that float, but better safe than sorry, I suppose. Place it in between, switch back over to our Sonoma, and pull through with Sonoma. Pull the white a little tighter. All right, now to finish up round seven, we're gonna, uh, let's cut it. Let's cut the white yarn and we'll come back to it. We have already started this. Let's, let's keep doing the same way. Okay, so now that you're in Sonoma yarn, we want to do two single crochets and then an increase, then two single crochets and an increase, and two single crochets and an increase to finish up this round. So that's two, one, 
two and then an increase, two in the same stitch, one and two, and then two more again, one, two single crochets, and then an increase into the next stitch, one, and two in the same stitch, and then one more of that repeat, two single crochets, one, two, and then finally an increase into this last stitch right here, one, and two. That'll be the end of round seven. Okay, pull our stitch marker up. For round eight, we're going to do two single crochets in Sonoma and then change back over to our white yarn, where we'll do eight more single crochets in white and then change back to our Sonoma yarn and do our final 11 single crochets in Sonoma. So it's all single crochets all the way around, just color changes in between. So again, that's two in Sonoma, one, there's two. Let's grab our white yarn. Place it in between, switch over to a white and pull through. And then we'll cut the Sonoma. Eight in white. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven, and here is eight. Change back over to our Sonoma. Like that. And then we wanna do uh, 11 more in Sonoma. I'm just gonna crochet around this and then cut it. And we'll come back to our white um, for in our next round. Okay, so that's 11 more single crochets in Sonoma. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine, 10, and this is our last stitch, 11. Okay, see how our body's coming together. Okay. Pull our stitch marker up. Now, we, uh, before we continue into the next round, let's add the face of our um, burb. Now, this is only important if you're making the burb. If you're making the head attached to the burb, obviously, you wouldn't need to do this part. Um, the head would already be attached. But I'm making my burb version. So I'm going to thread this yarn in on the needle, and I'm going to go straight through the very tip of it, of our piece first, and this is just a personal preference. Boom. I just really like adding a little tiny tuft of hair or of feathers at the top. So I do that, I cut it, and then I poke it like that, and it makes this little cute little tuft of hair at the top. Okay, so once you have that on, now we can add our eyes. And our eyes go right around um, actually, actually, no, next we want to sew on the burb beak. I'm sorry. So we want to take our burb beak and our burb beak is going to be sewn right around the increase stitch, um, on the face. So that's going to be right. We're going to sew it right around this stitch here. So we're going to go one half through here and then one half through here. And then our eyes are going to go right here and here. So there's our increase right in the center. So if you look really closely, you can see two single crochets in the same stitch right there. If you look, that's going to be round one. Let's see, round one, two, three, four. So we're into round four, stitch number one, two, three. So we're going to start in stitch number three and then do two over and thread the other end on the other side. So first we want to thread one side of the burb's beak like this, go straight in. And then we wanna th go two stitches over, one, two, thread the other side of the burb's beak, like that, pull that through the next loop. Now you're gonna have these two ends on the inside, 
and you want to pull it tight enough so that these knots on the beak get pulled into the face. So we're going to pull it just tight enough like that. See how the knot just got barely pulled in there? I want to do that on both sides like that. And then we can double knot it together on the inside. Just pull it nice and tight and then knot it again. Pull nice and tight like that. We can cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end at all, just like that. Throw that to the side. And that's gonna be how to add the burbs beak. See how that beak goes sewn on there? Pretty cute. Next, we can add our eyes. The eyes go on the outside of the burb beak. So just one stitch over right here, like that. And then one stitch over on the other side, right here, like that. Okay, we're coming up to the end now. And we can just go ahead and lock them in place on the inside. That's all we're gonna need to do for the face. There's one, the other side, just like how we did on the face, on the head rather. Lock those eyes into place. Lock those eyes into place on the face. All right. So now we have our Burb's face sewn on and we can continue on uh, crocheting their body. We'll pull our, oops, pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round nine. For round nine, we're gonna just do one single crochet in our Sonoma yarn and then we're gonna change back over to our white yarn right after that one single crochet. Change over to our white through with white okay and we're going to do 10 single crochets in white i'm going to crochet one time around the sonoma cut it we'll come back to it in just a second we want 10 single crochets in white so there's one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, and this will be 10. Now we can switch back over to our Sonoma yarn. Go through the Sonoma. Okay, all right. Um, we actually, I think I can just let the white yarn float now. Um, and next up for round nine, we want to do an invisible decrease in Sonoma. So an invisible decrease is a new stitch that we haven't done yet. Um, basically what you want to do is you want to go into the front loops of the next two stitches. That's going to be this loop here. So remember, this would be under both loops, but we only want to go under the front loop of this stitch and then the front loop of the next stitch also. The easiest way I find to do that and then once you're under those front loops, you want to do a single crochet. The easiest way I find to do that is you take your crochet hook, point up from the bottom, go straight up, and then re-angle the crochet hook again to go into the next front loop and then poke up the next one as well. So there's one, two, and then you want to do a single crochet. So yarn over, pull through those two loops, yarn over again, and pull through two to finish the invisible decrease. That's an invisible decrease. We're gonna do another one in a second. So if you wanna hold tight, I'll show you how to do that again. That's gonna be, um, after doing that invisible decrease, we want two more single crochets. So here's the next stitch. There's one and two, and then another invisible decrease. So again, that's up from the bottom, front loop, up from the bottom, front loop, and then our single crochet. Okay. And then finally, two more single crochets and finish up with another invisible decrease. So there's two single crochets, one and two. And then our last one's an invisible decrease, front loop, front loop. And then we're gonna pull a loop through those front loops, but to finish up this round, we're actually going to get our white yarn back and we're just letting it float. We're just gonna fold it over and switch over to white and pull through with white to finish up the round. Pull that tighter. Okay. 
Um, all right, so now we can continue on in our pattern using all white yarn. We don't need to keep changing back and forth to Sonoma. Uh, but for round 10, we're going to start by doing, um, round 10 is going to be one single crochet and then one invisible decrease all the way around till we get to the end of the round. We're going to keep repeating that. But for our first single crochet, I'm just going to work, first I'm going to fold my stitch counter up. But then I'm just going to crochet around our Sonoma yarn for our first single crochet like this. There's one. Okay, now I can cut my yarn pretty close. We don't need the Sonoma at all for the rest of the pattern, so we can actually just let it, let it go and use it again for another one of these later. All right, so round 10, now we're all in white yarn, one single crochet, one invisible decrease, repeated six times around to get to the end of the round. So let's do our invisible decrease. We did our single crochet. Invisible decrease, again, that's front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, repeat that all the way around. Here's our second one, single crochet one, invisible decrease one, front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Let's do our third, single crochet one, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. Let's do our next repeat, single crochet one, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, just a couple more. Single crochet one, invisible decrease. Last one, single crochet one, and then our last invisible decrease. One, two, pull through. Okay, now you should only have 12 stitches around. We can pull our loop out. Um, because now we want to sew on the wings. Um, we want to sew, look at how cute this little dude is. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So now we want to sew on our wings and then our tail um, and uh, continue on after that. But before I do that, I actually want to pull my stitch counter, uh, my stitch counter out because it's going to get in the way of our wings. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pull all of these stitch, stitch counters out. You can just pull from there. Yeah, perfect. All right. So we want to start by grabbing our wings. And again, we have our right and our left wing, or if you wanted to make our two white or two right wings. Um, this is going to be our right wing. That's going to be right over here. Um, if you look at like this, that's why it's our right wing, even though when he's looking at it, you, it's our left. Um, the right wing is going to go, let's look at it on our finished piece. I'm going to take our head off here so you can see exactly where it goes into. It's going to go right over this. The first end is going to go right here above that Sonoma stitch. And then the second one is going to go, it looks like right in between the increase right here. So one ends right here, one ends right here, and then we're going to double knot on the inside. So here's our right wing. We're going to start with this end thread it onto our needle and through that stitch right here. If you angle right under the eye as well, you can find it. And then with the other end, thread it on our needle through, if we count over, we go one, two, and then up one right here. Just like that. And we want to take these two ends and pull them really pretty tight so that the knot on one side goes through and then on the other side, uh, just as tight as you can on the other side, and then double knot them on the inside. One. You really want to make sure that double knot is tight though. Two. And then we can cut it pretty close. And there's our first wing sewn on pretty easy. Then our next wing, our next wing is going to go on obviously the opposite side and our next wing is going to go, let's see, where are we sewing it on? We're going to sew it right above that white stitch and then looks like just a few stitches up and then up into this increase. So that means we're going to start by threading our outside one. So remember there's two ends here, one's coming from the inside, one's coming from the outside. Start with our outside stitch first. 
and we'll go right above this white stitch right there. So if you count, if you follow that over, you can see how it's lined up with the other wing right there. And then with the inside, thread that on a needle. And we're gonna go up, we're gonna go one, two, and then up one right here. So that's from where that end one's coming in, one, two over, up one right here. Into the body. And we're gonna do just the exact same that we did for the other ring, wing. Pull it tight enough. Now you gotta be careful pulling this other one tight because it does pull this inside in because we had to thread that needle or that knot all the way over. So we kind of just want to like make sure that this goes into there. So pull it just tight enough so that it gets sewn on into there. And then pull the other end tight. And we can double knot these on the inside. If you want to, you can sew it on even tighter by going out through some adjacent stitches and then around the outside of the wing as well. Okay, double knotted, cut it nice and close. And there we go. All right, so we got both of our wings sewn on. See how it's, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Right, isn't that cute? Okay, next up we wanna sew on the tail. And the tail has two ends as well. First, we wanna thread the inside of the tail. So you can see how there's one coming on the outside and then one coming straight through the inside. Start by threading the inside onto your needle. And then find the back of your stitch and go right. See this stitch right here? That's an invisible decrease. See how it's got like this weird little bit under it right there? You just want to go right in between that single crochet right there. Out through the bottom. And then with the other end, thread it on. And we're gonna go through one side of the stitch and then out through the other. So there's where you went in. You wanna go through the stitch above it, around the outside, and then go around the outside of this stitch on the outside of the wing, or I mean the tail, then back in through the body and then out through the other side again. See, so back out from where you came in and pull that tight and then go around the other side right here under these both these loops and then into the body again like so pull it nice and tight and double knot these two on the inside oopsies I accidentally went around my stitch so we can go ahead and pull that out there we go all right we're just going to double knot those one and two. Cut it relatively closely. Throw those to the side. All right, so now we've got our tail sewn on and our wings sewn on. Next thing we want to do is add a little bit of black to the, um, the outside here. See, so if you look on our guy, Right above the wings, there's two more black lines. So what we wanna do is grab a little bit more black yarn. Thread it onto our needle and just embroider a couple more lines over the wings. So they really come out just outside of the wings. So what we're gonna do is right, I'm just looking, yeah. That, yeah. So right outside, see, so this is where the wing came out. We wanna start one stitch over from it, coming from the out and then up. Actually, we can just go all the way up to where the wing is sewn on there and then back out. We're gonna double it up. That's one, throw it back on our needle because we lost it. And right down through will be There we go. So there's one. We'll double knot it on the inside. One. And grab the other end. Oh, there we go. 
a double knot. There's two. Okay, you can cut that nice and close on the inside. And we'll do another end on the opposite side, thrown around our needle. Another um, black line on the other side of the wing right over here. So same thing, one stitch over, it's gonna come out right here, almost all the way through till we just have a little tail left over. And then let's go right above, mm, let's go right to here. So that's just one up, two, three over, and then all the way out like that. We're gonna double it. One, And two. Okay, so it just adds a little bit more detail on the outside of the wings. Again, this is just because this is what uh, snowy plovers actually have on them. And then we can double knot it on the inside again. That'll be the embroidery part done as well. Okay, cut the yarn. Okay. Now, before continuing, I do want to stuff it just a little bit. Um, and the best way to do that is use a little bit of regular stuffing. And we're going to go in and try to get it over the eyes. First, you want to stuff over the eyes. Obviously, you want to stuff it over the head if you have the head attached. You want to go just over the eyes like that. Okay, see how I'm just going right over it? And then we can stuff it with a little bit of our thread. You don't need too much of the thread, just like that. We're just using our waste yarn, like so. Okay, and that's just so that we can use our wasted yarn so we don't have as much waste. And let's get our crochet hook back in there and we'll do our final round of our piece. So for our last round, I believe we're on, yeah, round 11. Our final round, we just want to do an invisible decrease into every stitch all the way around. That's it. Just an invisible decrease all the way around. And again, an invisible decrease, you're going to go front loop. Let's move this fella out of the way. Front loop, and then a single crochet. Just like that. We're just going to do that in every stitch. Front loop. That's our first. There's our second. We want six of them total. Front loop, front loop. Single crochet, that'll be our third. Couple more. Front loop, front loop. Single crochet. There's our fifth. Or no, our fourth rather. Here's our fifth. One more. Front loop, front loop. Single crochet. All right. And to finish it up, we'll cut the yarn, pull it all the way through. And then before sewing it closed, we need to stuff it a little bit more. I'm gonna use the back of my crochet hook to help get that stuffing in there. And you don't wanna overstuff it, but you know, you don't wanna understuff it either. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's just, just around the edge. Okay, now the last thing you wanna do uh, before sewing it closed, if you want, is add your little mini magnets in. So if you want, you can take your mini magnets, stuff it right into the bottom here, and then sew around the mini magnets. I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna have my little legs on it, um, but you can do that if you'd like to have uh, a mini magnet on the inside, obviously. Okay, but I'm just gonna go ahead and thread our needle and sew our piece closed. To sew a piece closed, we're just gonna go through the front loops of all the stitches around the outside of the last round here. Just the front loop only of all of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and here's our last one, six. And then pinch right where the end is and just pull it tight and it'll close that hole up. Now go straight back into the piece and then out 
somewhere on the back, just like that, and pull it nice and tight to close up like that. Okay, we're just about done. I mean, you might be noticing there's missing one pretty pivotal thing, our legs. Although it's actually pretty cute without legs, I'm not gonna lie. All right, but we do wanna add some legs. Here's the head, by the way, if you wanna put the head over it. All, uh, the best way to put the head on top of it is to um, go under the beak like this and then fold it over it and then twist like that. Then we'll get the head on there. Once the head is on, it's 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 really on there. <laughs> you don't like it's per it they should fit pretty well together just like that. And there you go. Okay, so let's finish up by adding some legs. What you need for the legs is you need our second pipe cleaner and we're going to go ahead and fold that just in half, perfectly in half and then cut that half in half. Okay. Now, each one of these halves is gonna make a different leg. The first thing you wanna do is fold that half into half, like that, and then fold up to make a little W. Okay, just a little tiny, you just want, a, these are gonna make the toes. So however long you want the toes, let's say it's about like that long for a toe, then fold it up like that, and then fold it up like that. See how we have a little tiny W? And then we wanna fold back down to make kind of like another little W, kind of like a little trident. And you want these three to be the exact same length if you can. Okay, once you have that little trident, we'll go ahead and go straight in and then twist together. And then we could just twist this all the way up till we have, well, yeah, twist it up till you have it as long as you want the feet to be. So that's gonna be, actually, you can twist all the way up to the very end if you want to, but let's go with like, yeah, let's just twist it all the way up because we're just gonna go straight through the inside anyhow. So all the way up to the very bottom, like that. And then take your needle, go in through the toe, and we're gonna twist that toe around like that. And we're gonna do the same with all these other toes. Just twist them around a little, just once or twice. This one also, I'll just twist it once or twice. You wanna make sure that the needle can still fit in between the toes though. One, two, and three. Okay. All right, you wanna go ahead and make two of these, but I'll make my second one afterwards. Now we can take this end and we're gonna go straight through the bottom wherever you want the foot to be. So we're gonna go right through about right Right, like there. Now, if you don't know where you want it, take a needle first and find a little spot. And that way you can stretch the, the hole out a little bit like that. See how it, I made a little spot for it. And then we can go straight up through into that. Just twist it to get it in there a little bit further past the stuffing a little bit, just like that. Okay, now we want to add yarn around the outside of this foot like we did for the beak. So you want a little bit of black yarn, thread it onto our needle, and we're gonna come out through an adjacent stitch like over here, and then come out through right where it's coming, the, the foot itself is coming out. Like so. And then we're gonna start wrapping up the foot Try not to wrap too tightly because you might accidentally like, pull it out. So just try to like wrap up and just try to cover as much of the felt as you can as you're wrapping up and we'll cover the rest of it as we go back down. When you get to a toe, wrap around the toe and then in through the center of the toe 
to make sure that it's completely covered in our yarn. One, two, and I'm just gonna cover it as much as I can, make sure that there's as little amount of that felt, or the, the pipe cleaner rather, sticking out. Okay, and then I'll wrap back around the toe and then around the center toe, do the same over here. I, and you can see how I'm really holding it in place. I don't want it to accidentally pop out because I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together once we get back to the base of it. But until we get to the base, it can be a little fragile. So just, just be careful basically. Okay, there's the next toe. Wrap around a few more times there. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch that toe and I'll pinch this toe a little bit. And back around. And then we'll get to this next toe. Last toe. I'm saying toe a lot. <laughs> One. Toe. I mean two. <laughs> Okay, see, I'm just really trying to make sure that all that felt around the pipe cleaner is covered up, or as much as I can. Go around. I'm gonna go around the center. And then now we can start, first off, I'm gonna bend it like that so it's straight. So it got, can actually stand. And now I'm gonna start wrapping up the leg. Now I want this leg to be a little bit thicker too. So we wanna go ahead and really try to make sure we wrap up as much as we can. When we get to the base here, you can wrap up pretty significantly because we want it to be a little thicker at the base than we did at the top. There's one, two, let's go ahead and get it in there. All right, next, to finish this up, go through an adjacent stitch that wasn't where you came out. So that's gonna be, let's go like right over, actually let's go right here around the back part. And then come out through where your other tail end is so you have something to double knot to. Like that. Now you have both ends there. Let's go ahead and just make sure it's how we want it to be. It's a pretty long foot. Actually, well, I guess it's not that long. It's about, that's about normal. It just looks weird because there's only one of them. We'll pull it nice and tight, and then we'll double knot these two ends. And we'll hide this end on the inside. So tight, and tight. Cut the end. We're gonna take our needle and just stuff that back into our piece. And there we go. That's how you're gonna add a little foot. We can even give it a little bit of a of an angle to it because it's a little long longer than our last one too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a second foot next to it, right right like um, probably like right like here. See? So I'll have another foot there, and I'll be back uh, in after that. So I'll go ahead and make our second foot. Okay, so I've added my other leg, and you can see how it looks there. Now I'll be honest, my second leg probably wasn't as good, as easy to do as my first, because the other leg kept getting in the way, and uh, I almost ran out of yarn as I was going around it. So just be wary of that. Try not to use too little amount of yarn. Now the only other thing we want to do is we want it to stand upright. Well, there's you can you don't have to have it standing upright like that if you don't want it to. Um, but if you do want it to be standing upright, all you have to do is take a needle or a um, uh, a toothpick and put it right into the bum, just like that, until it's about the same length as the feet, and that's it. It'll stand upright like that. Um, if you need to cut the cut it, uh, go ahead. I got I cut this um, my other one here. I cut this one a little shorter so that it would fit better. 
but that is how I add, um, how I make it stand. Now, if you don't want it to stand, you can just like fold up the legs like this and then he'll be sitting, which is also really cute and uh, would work really well with the magnet if you have, if you added the magnet. Actually, that's, that's actually crazy cute. <laughs> that's actually crazy cute. Um, I think this one's going to be sitting because that's too cute. Oh my gosh, look at these sitting in my hand. Oh, that's so cute. And then we can take the head off and it's a little burb on, in disguise. Here we go. All right. Thank you so much for crocheting this snowy plover along with me and supporting this fundraiser. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out all the other patterns and designers in this year's Earth Day collection, um, especially me, at Louis Loops. That's my handle on social media. Thank you again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. Let's see. I can't remember what snowy... They kind of just sound like... <laughs> I guess that's pretty good. That's a pretty good snowy plover coup. All right, Postal Pizza, happy hooking, bye.